And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan. Jordan is going to be helping us out today and um, also is the person who will be representing the Pittsburgh Zoo and talking to us about all the amazing things that they have to offer and giving you a little bit of uh, insider info about their furry friends. So, um, Jordan, uh, now's your time to just say hello and introduce yourself. All right. So I'm Jordan, as he said before. Uh, just kind of a little background information about myself. I am one of the animal care specialists here at the education department of the Pittsburgh Zoo PPG Aquarium. Uh, some of the ways I got here was through internships, uh, different degrees that I've gotten in uh, biology and stuff like that. Uh, just kind of my love for animals have started at a very young age. So I kind of knew I wanted to do this from the very beginning. But enough about me. I want to go ahead and show you some of our animals. So if you want to give me a couple seconds to bring on our first animal. So can you guys all see him pretty well? I'm, just gonna go oh, with I'm looking for any comments or anything. I think we're good. All right, so this is Hedwig. Hedwig is a Eurasian eagle owl. So Eurasian eagle owls are actually the second biggest owl species in the world. So Hedwig here actually has a wingspan of about seven, seven and a half feet. So that is almost double the size of my body. So he has a very, very big wingspan. You can see he's not very happy with me this morning. I woke him up from his nap. Uh, he wasn't too happy about it, but he's kind of used to our schedule because we've been using him for classes and stuff. But you can kind of see his big, bright orange eyes. So those orange eyes and just how big his eyes are in general help him to see. Uh, so if you were about two and a half miles away, he would be able to see you very clearly, and he would actually be able to see something the size of a teeny tiny mouse. So he has extremely good vision. So his good vision uh, enables him to see uh, predators, especially at nighttime. So he has special things in his eye that enable to see him, allow him to see 20 times better than we can at nighttime. So he has extremely good vision. So you can kind of see how he's turning his head around. So the owls can't actually spin their heads completely around, but they can actually go 270 degrees. So that is if you were to go from your front shoulder all the way around to the back side of that same shoulder. So the reason why they can't go the whole entire way around is because they have actual bones in their neck, just like we do. Uh, we have seven bones in our neck, but these guys actually have 14. So that's how their neck is so flexible. But you can kind of see, you might be able to see his big, huge talons right here. So his big, huge talons actually help him to grab whatever he wants to grab onto. So you can kind of see, he's grabbing onto my hand right now, and it's making sure that he is very steady. He does not like to be kind of off balance. He gets a little bit grumpy when he's off balance. But um, you can kind of see these little tufts on his head too. So whenever he sticks these straight up, that shows that he is extremely angry. So when he is extremely angry, we do not want to mess with him. You can see right now, he's kind of just very curious about things that are going on and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so do you guys have any questions? I know it might be a little bit of a process for questions about Mr. Hedwig, but if you guys had any questions, I can answer them for you. We definitely agree that he sounds grumpy. Yeah, he's Maybe very, he needs some coffee. <laughs> yeah, he's a little, he's not a morning bird, that's for sure. Yeah, any questions at all that you guys might have for him? Yeah, Dorothy wanted to know, how old is Hedwig? That is a very good question. So Hedwig here is about eight years old. So he is pretty much still a young boy. So Hedwig here, these guys can live upwards of about 17 to almost 20 years old. And then in captivity, they can actually live up to about 23 or 24. So he still has a very, very long time with us. And as you can see, he is extremely healthy. He is a very, very healthy bird. You guys have any other questions? So there's a couple, Jordan. Uh, Jaden wanted to know, uh, what, what would Hedwig eat? So Hedwig absolutely loves rats and mice. So these guys primarily will eat rodents, uh, but his absolute favorite is actually rats. So he likes pretty decent sized rats with how big he is. 
uh, but that is his absolute favorite. And Veronica wanted to know, is he a Harry Potter fan? Because was he named after Harry Potter? <laughs> so we do get that question a lot. So we actually do have um, Luna and Hedwig. Uh, I haven't been able to ask him recently. He hasn't told me the answer if he's a, a Harry Potter fan. But my guess is probably, yeah, he would be. All right. Any other questions, guys? And if we do move on and you have a question about Hedwig the Owl, we can ask after the presentation as well. Um, so Liam wants to know, where would Hedwig normally live when he's not in Pittsburgh? So that is a very good question. So these guys, their names are Eurasian Eagle Owls. So they are actually on the continent of Europe, Asia, and things like that. Uh, their span is usually down towards the Asian area. Uh, they really, really like the cold air and stuff like that. Uh, they can do very, very well, well where it's cold. So they love to be over uh, in the Asia area. If you guys don't have any, you, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I just want to say there is uh, another question. Uh, Zakari yep. wants to know, um, you know, does he eat babies? Because there have been some thoughts that owls purposely look at, you know, baby prey and try to eat babies. So is that something that Hedwig would be interested in? So with these guys, I'm not sure if she means baby humans. That is an absolutely not true. She, he will not eat baby humans, but he will go after smaller prey if he thinks that it is a better chance of him actually getting it. So if it's easier for him to get it and he doesn't have to burn as many calories getting it, then he absolutely will go after something smaller. So is that like their version of uh, drive through Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> And how and, high would he be able to fly? So these guys don't really like to fly that high. Uh, they're a little bit heavier for birds. And even though he only weighs about six pounds, that is a little bit on the heavier side for birds. So these guys don't like to fly up high. They actually are the only bird species that have silent flight. So their feathers are designed in a way that lets them have that silent flight. So they like to stay lower to the ground so they can kind of swoop in. And that's how they get their food. I saw somebody asked um, where you guys got him. So he was actually donated to us. So he was donated to us uh, from a family that um, was kind of like a wildlife center. Uh, once they couldn't have enough room for him, they actually asked us if we wanted him. And with us being able to take better care of him, it was kind of a perfect fit for us. Any other questions, guys, before we bring out the next animal? Well, one more um, yeah. that I'm going to have, and then we're going to move on, because Sophia, I believe, asked, how fast would he be able to fly? So these guys, uh, like I said before, they're on a little bit of the heavier side, uh, so they won't be able to fly too fast, but they can fly upwards of about 20 to 25 miles an hour. So it's still pretty fast, but not as fast as, say, like a peregrine falcon, who can dive down at about speeds of almost 200 miles an hour. So. All right, guys, I, I think we're good to move on to the next one. And yeah. if you have other questions about the owl for everyone in the room, please put it in chat. We're going to ask for questions at the end as well, so you didn't miss your opportunity. Absolutely. All right, if you guys want to give me a couple seconds to put him back and take out our next animal. It takes a little bit longer to get out. <laughs> Rihanna. Hello. You come here? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, guys, sorry about that. So, Rihanna is a little bit grumpy with me today as well. 
Um, so this is Rihanna. Rihanna is a prehensile tailed porcupine. So these guys come from South America. So they love to live upwards in the trees. So one cool thing about her is she is a prehensile tail porcupine. So you can kind of see her long tail over here. She doesn't like when I touch it. So this long tail helps her to stay up in the trees and it can actually support all of her body weight. So this little teeny tiny tail can actually support all of her about 25 pounds. So it's a pretty strong tail. So you can kind of see how the end of her tail isn't the same as her quills. So the reason for that is actually because this leathery skin back here actually helps to add more grip. So that grip helps her to stay in trees longer. And if it were these quills instead of the skin, these quills actually come out. So she might actually be able to fall. So she wants to make sure that she's safe and doesn't fall. So that's why her skin here is leathery strong and uh, doesn't have any quills. But speaking of quills, you can see that she has all of these very nice and pretty white quills. So these quills are pretty much just modified hairs. So just like our fingernails in our hair, it's made of something called keratin. So keratin is pretty much just a hard uh, substance that is a, acts as protection. So with these, these are hollow. So they are very, very light. But like I said, they are like hairs, so they actually come out. So one common misconception with these guys is that they can actually shoot their quills out, but that's actually not true. So with them, they can actually sense where something is coming from. And you kind of see how she moved her body towards me and kind of away at the same time. So they, like I said, they can actually sense where the danger is coming from. So they have two special muscles along the so sides of their body. And if they tense those muscles up, all of their quills will stand up on end. And then that's how, whenever she moves her body backwards, whenever she hits something that's trying to get her um, and the quills stick into that, per into that predator, that's how they got the common misconception that they actually shoot their quills out. So they actually don't. These will fall out just like normal hairs, like yours or mine. And uh, what really helps her is that they cover her whole entire body. So one cool thing that I will show you is one part of her body that doesn't have anything. We'll see if she'll come up for me. You gonna stand up? Come on. You can do it. There she goes. So you can kind of see underneath her belly a little bit. So underneath her belly, we'll try to get her to do it again if you guys didn't get to see it well. So underneath her belly is the only spot where she doesn't have these hard quills. So those hard quills is what protects her. And you can kind of see how whenever she grabbed the banana chip, she immediately hunched back over. So that is how she is 99% of the time. She's hunched over because that is really the only weak spot on her body is her belly. But uh, with that, she is able to protect herself pretty much all the time uh, because it is very hard to get them off of their feet and onto their backs just because they have this extremely strong tail and they actually do have really good grip strength as well. And if you wanted to zoom in a little bit, she actually has these really long claws that actually helps her to grip onto branches and all a bunch of other things as well that help her to stay steady and to help her not get actually flipped over. So do you guys have any questions for her? Anything you wanna know? Sure, there's actually quite a few, Jordan. Um, so mm -hmm. Veronica wanted to know, do porcupines make good house pets? <laughs> <laughs> so I wish that Rihanna would make a very good house pet. Uh, she is very, very cute. But unfortunately with these guys, they do not make good house pets uh, just because even though they can get used to humans like she's used to us, uh, with these quills, they are very dangerous. Uh, they hurt very bad if you get stuck with one. So it doesn't hurt to get stuck with it. It's actually when the quill gets pulled out that it hurts. So that is one reason why these guys would not make a very good house pet. And these guys are nocturnal, so they'll be up all night while you're trying to sleep. So that won't be too good. Any other questions? Alex wanted to know, uh, did the people at the zoo train her a little bit so that way um, she was a little bit more, I guess, domesticated? Yeah, yeah, that is a very good question. So when she is actually done with her banana chip here, that's her favorite food. I probably should have mentioned that. Banana chips are her absolute favorite food. 
But whenever she's done with this banana chip, we can show her, uh, show you guys if she'll do it today. She was a little grumpy, but she can actually do high fives. Uh, she can, whenever we grab the back of her tail, she will raise up her back feet. And what that helps us to do is whenever we need to show her to like the vets and stuff, uh, we lift up her back tail, she'll stick out her legs, like I said, and it'll let the vets see her a lot easier rather than trying to force her to show us her legs, which she will not be happy about. So those are just kind of certain uh, training app, app, training behaviors that we have taught her that kind of help her to become a little bit more domesticated, like you guys said. Uh, and then it just kind of helps us to make her a little bit happier so we're not forcing her to do something that she doesn't want to. That was a very good question. That's awesome. Uh, Liam had mentioned that Rihanna looks like a little bit like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Are por porcupines related to hedgehogs at all? So porcupines and hedgehogs are actually not related. Uh, but she does, she kind of does resemble a hedgehog. Um, with hedgehogs, uh, they are a lot smaller. Uh, their quills are a lot smaller as well. And their quills, even though their quills can come out uh, on hedgehogs, they are a lot more, uh, I guess you could say, stuck into their body. So it's more of a protection rather than just a hair modification. So that is a very good question. Now you mentioned quills are, are kind of made out of the same stuff as our fingernails, right? Yes. So Dano wanted to know, do, do you ever have to trim Rihanna's quills? That is a very good question. Not many people actually ask that question. So with her, we don't have to trim her quills. She will actually, whenever she feels irritated, it's kind of like, uh, whenever we get a little bit of a, a acne or a pimple or anything like that, our skin becomes really irritated. Uh, her skin will actually do the same thing with her quills, and then she will shake her body from side to side very violently, uh, not trying to hurt anybody or anything like that, but it's just trying to get the quills out. So she will actually shed her quills, and then she will actually regrow new ones. So we don't have to trim her or anything like that. So she probably, uh, she pretty much is self-maintaining. So she's very easy to take care of. Dorothy wanted to know, uh, does Rihanna like being around people? And do porcupines in general like being around people? So porcupines, we do have porcupines in North America. Like I said, she is from South America. But uh, people, uh, porcupines from North America in the wild typically do not like to be around humans. Uh, like I said, they will try to, if they can, they will do anything they can themselves and you really don't want to get up caught on the bad end of a porcupine because like I said these quills really hurt but as for Rihanna she loves being around people because she knows that when she's around people we give her banana chips so she will do pretty much anything for banana chips but she is very very used to being around humans and she's actually done with her banana chip now so we can see if we can get her to give me a little bit of a high five you want to stand up can you high five high five no, I know. Come here. You did high five? She's like, not today. Not today, huh? No, sorry guys, she wouldn't do it today. But if you could see whenever she was standing up, sorry to cut you guys off if you had any other questions, but if you could see her teeth, so she is actually a rodent. So since she is a rodent, you can see how she's chewing like that. It actually helps to wear down her teeth. So with rodents, Rodents' teeth actually grow throughout their whole entire lives, so they actually need to wear down their teeth to be able to have them fit comfortably in their mouth. So her teeth are this bright orange color. Looks like she hasn't brushed her teeth in about two years. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, it's different with these guys. But um, with her, she will do this to eat that way because it helps wear down her teeth. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. So we got a few. I'm going to give you a couple. Um, Sophia and Gianna wanted to know, what else would Rihanna eat? And Lily wants to know, uh, where did you get her? You said South America, but, you know, exactly where in South America would you know? So these guys, uh, well, Rihanna specifically, loves fruit. So her absolute favorite is actually bananas. So when we first got uh, Rihanna, she actually came from another zoo. Uh, she was born in another zoo. Uh, there was actually two of them, her sister and her. Uh, these guys don't really like to stay in big groups. They may stay in groups of like their own family, but they are mainly solitary, so it wasn't a bad thing to actually separate them. Uh, but whenever she was born, she was sent to us from another zoo, uh, and she's actually been here ever since. 
But with her, like I said before, her favorite food is bananas. Uh, whenever she was first, she first came here, uh, she actually had a whole banana, not banana chips, a whole banana, and she ate it so fast that it actually got stuck up her nose. And she actually had to go into emergency surgery to have it uh, removed from her nose. So it's safe to say that we actually just give her banana chips now instead of whole bananas because she kind of just devours bananas. <laughs> so, you guys have any other questions? Yeah, Bailey wanted to know what's her age, and Dylan wanted to know if uh, Rihanna has any babies, any children. <clears throat> that is a good question. So Rihanna here is actually kind of an old lady. So she is about 17 years old. So she's pretty old for a porcupine. Uh, porcupines can in, in captivity, so in zoos and stuff. We'll see if we can get, can get her to do a high five. Can you do a high five? High five, yeah, good job. So <clears throat> porcupines can actually, in captivity, so in like zoos and stuff, live upwards of about 21 to 22 years. So she still has a very long time with us. Uh, porcupines in the wild, uh, which like I said, in South America, uh, in like the tropical rainforests, uh, they can live upwards of about 17 years. So she is a pretty old for a porcupine. And, um, Couple questions about her age. Um, so, like, especially when it comes to her quills, as she gets older, you know, with us, our hair changes color. Would her hair or quills rather fall out or change color as she got older? So, that is a good question. So, these guys, whenever they do get older, whenever they start really young, uh, their quills are not this hard. So, they actually come out like normal hairs. Uh, but whenever they get older, they become more stiff, uh, they get longer, just like our hair does whenever we don't cut it after a while. But uh, with these hairs, their quills won't really change color. So whenever they are born, they are mainly a uh, lightish brown color uh, to a tan color. And then as they get older and their quills harden, they will turn into this whitish color or with porcupines around here, like in North America, they can be a black color, a gray color, or even a brown color. So it just depends on the species of uh, porcupine. But with Rihanna here, she will mainly stay this color pretty much her whole life. And just like I said before, so you can actually see that's how she gets rid of some of her quills. Uh, kind of perfect timing. Uh, so she has an itch underneath there. So that's usually due to a um, quill that is kind of upsetting her. She's very active today. You want to try another high five? You want to try a high five? Yes, good job. So with her quills, uh, like I was saying, they will not change colors, but as they do get older, they will get longer. And just like we lose our hair as we get older, they will lose some of their quills as they get older too. Uh, but they won't become, uh, they won't lose all their quills, such as some of us uh, will actually lose all of our hair. So just depends on the species with the color and stuff like that. But with the quills, they will stay pretty much on their body their whole life, other than when they want to get rid of the color. All right, I think that is all the questions for Rihanna. Um, I have a question. Does, does Rihanna like music? Like, is she a fan of Rihanna? So I have never actually played Rihanna's music for Rihanna. That might be her enrichment for today. We'll have to do that. So one of our, uh, what's kind of cool is actually one of our in loves to listen to Mariah Carey. So we're kind of going off of that with Mar uh, uh with the, she's actually a macaw. She loves Mariah Carey. She actually will hum along to some of the songs. Uh, but with Rihanna, I'm not sure. That's actually a very good uh, thought. And I'm actually going to definitely play some music for her this afternoon. We'll see if she likes it. All right. I think that is all the questions we have for now. Uh, just a reminder, if you do have other questions about Rihanna or Hedwig, um, the owl, please feel free to ask. And um, we'll be happy to answer at the end. Yeah. All right, guys, well, do you want to say goodbye to little Miss Rihanna? We are going to go ahead and put her back. Uh, she definitely has enough banana chips for today. Uh, we don't like to give her too many. But she is a very happy porcupine, and I hope you guys enjoyed her. Pretty sure I saw someone ask earlier about how you handle them. And as you guys can see, Got some nice big gloves down there. Yeah. Go ahead and handle her safely. So if you guys actually wanted to watch me pick her up, like I was saying before, this is actually one of the behaviors that we teach. 
uh, with her being able to lift up her back legs. So we do carry these big gloves because like I said before, those quills do hurt. They do not feel good. So I will step over on this side. And as I lift up her tail, we'll see that she is lifting up her back legs. So that's not me at all. So she is actually doing everything by herself. And then she will go right on her hand like this. And then she will wrap her tail around our arms so she feels secure. And then she just kind of hangs out like that. But she does get a little heavy after a while, so we try to put her down. <laughs> so this is where we will bring Brianna back to her little crate before we bring her back to her nice big home that we have for her in the back. I don't know what you're doing today. You're all over. <laughs> There you go. Good job. So Rihanna knows that after she does a good job, we always reward her with a banana chip. So she will come halfway out of her crate in order to search for a banana chip, as you can kind of see right here. So just to make sure that she knows she did a good job, we'll give her another banana chip. But we we'll keep that between me and you guys. So don't tell anybody I gave her this many banana chips. <laughs> Good job. All right, guys. Well, if you guys have any other questions, anything you want to know about some of our animals, or any questions that you might have for me? So, um, as you know, and please, everybody, feel free to ask questions about any other animals at the Pittsburgh Zoo or the Pittsburgh Zoo in general. Um, I did want to ask you, Jordan, because the zoo did just reopen up. Could you go into, um, if people wanted to visit the Pittsburgh Zoo, how they can go about doing that? Yeah, so as of right now, we are still doing the time ticket sales. Uh, so with that, you have to go online and actually purchase your tickets so you can get them for a specific time period. Uh, you show up to the zoo at that time, and then after you show up, you are uh, free to go around the zoo. Uh, we do recommend that you do wear masks like I am wearing right now. Uh, just because with mammals and everything like that, there is a slight possibility of actually giving it to animals and with people, since you're going to be a lot closer than you have been in like quarantine, uh, it is just recommended that you do wear a mask. Uh, definitely bring one because there's actually certain parts of the zoo where you actually are required to wear a mask, like such as the aquarium, just because it's a lot closer uh, contact with people and uh, we just don't want to take any risks. So we do clean all of our... Uh, equipment, everything that we use, everything that people touch every single day just to be very, very safe. Uh, but we do recommend that you do bring masks. And you said people can get tickets if they just go to the Pittsburgh Zoo website? Yes, exactly. All right, so we had a question. Uh, Candace wants to know, do you have any koala bears or koala babies? So we do not have any koala bears, unfortunately. So koalas are extremely, extremely expensive. Uh, to take care of. Uh, one of the only things that they actually eat is uh, eucalyptus. And with, when they only eat eucalyptus, it is extremely hard to get. And it is actually very expensive to have it shipped to us since it's not native to here. So we unfortunately do not have any koalas with us right now. They are very cute and I wish we did, but they are just really, really expensive to take care of. Dorothy wants to know, is there any dress at the zoo? There is giraffe. So we have two giraffes here at the zoo. We have Lewis, who is our male giraffe, and Socks, who is our female giraffe. Uh, Lewis is about 2,400 pounds, and Socks is actually around 1,200. So Socks is on the smaller end for females, but Lewis is on the larger end for men. You guys have time for like one more question, if anybody has one more question. Um, I'm looking through here, um, and we do have time for one more, so I'm just um, waiting here. Oh, someone wanted to know what your favorite, Lexi, wants to know what your favorite animal is at the zoo, Jordan. <laughs> so that is a very difficult question. So I've been very, very fortunate, like I said before, with a bunch of different internships. Uh, I've been able to work with polar bears, sea otters, sea lions. Uh, all the animals that we have down here in the education department, which is over 60 of them. So it is extremely difficult to say, but I would definitely have to say my favorite is the polar bears. Polar bears are my, one of my absolute favorite animals, and being able to work with them, just to be able to see how big they are, is very, very cool. Um, 
Coda, our male here, is about uh, 1,200 pounds, so he is a very, very big uh, polar bear. So that will probably be, have to be my favorite. All right, Jordan. Um, did you want to say anything else to uh, all of the, the kids and families who, who have attended today before I kind of wrap things up? Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium. We really appreciate it. All of the animals definitely appreciate it as well. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Jordan, thank you so much for um, even being willing to do this. I mean, this has been a ton of fun. I uh, definitely enjoyed checking out Hedwig and Rihanna. Hopefully we can do it again before we wrap up our camp uh, July 31st. Uh, and that would be totally awesome. So thank you again, Jordan. Yeah, you guys are very welcome. All right. And to everyone else in the room, um, I am actually going to put a link here for everyone who wants to check it out to the Pittsburgh Zoo. So that is the link I just put into everyone in chat. If you want to go get tickets to the Pittsburgh Zoo, go on a tour yourself, as you mentioned, or as Jordan mentioned, you know, they keep everything safe there and it should be a lot of fun. Also, uh, probably started in August, PA Virtual will be um, going out there as well um, in person and be inviting some of our PA Virtual families, who those people who are PA Virtual families to come join us. Uh, so just real quick before I wrap up everything, if in fact you missed anything or just wanna watch this again, maybe you came in late, there will be a recording of this that will be put on our YouTube page and we'll put it up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You'll get an email as well. So that way you can view it, share it with your friends, uh, miss or see anything that you might have missed. And it will be up there for you and we'll have it up there all summer. Also, uh, if you want to join any of our summer camp activities that we have going on after today, there is a link I'm putting in right now. You just click on that. You could sign up for any of them we have listed so far, and we will be putting up more as the summer goes on. It will be going on until July 31st. It is always free. It's always going to be at 11 a.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. We'll be happy to see you tomorrow. We're going to be doing a tour of the York Revolution Baseball Park. So actually, the uh, president of the York Revolution is going to be doing that with us. Friday, we are going to have a lesson in a uh, American Sign Language, and talk about the ABCs and some little phrases that you'll be able to learn with one of our teachers, Mary Ellen Moore. And we got a bunch of other things. Um, following on Monday, we have a lesson in Tai Chi. We're going to have something on backyard games. We're going to have something that is going to be practicing yoga. And we'll try to come back to the Pittsburgh Zoo as well. Uh, one other thing I want to leave you with, if in fact, you are someone who is not a PA virtual family, but wants to hear more about the school, or if you have any questions in general, I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. Feel free to ask them, and I am more than happy to be able to do that, answer all these questions for you. But I hope you join us tomorrow for the baseball tour at the York Revolution, or Friday with the American Sign Language course, which will be for everybody. You don't even need anything beyond your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever you were using to view right now. So I'm going to turn off my microphone. I'm going to turn off my camera. I'll stick around and chat. And thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing time today. And if I don't see you or talk to you or chat with you, have an amazing week and weekend.